cleaning. It is still working. You, you won't believe it. It's a broken uh, laptop, but it still uh, is working. And somehow, recently, long story short, last Friday, God gave me a newer one. I didn't buy this. Uh, God also gave me a newer cell phone. Neither, neither this uh, laptop nor this new phone, and neither I buy this. Pastor Burley doesn't have that much yet. <laughs> to God be the glory. All of these are God's grace. All of these are, you know, uh, gifts from the Lord. And God is giving this to me for the expansion of His kingdom uh, to equip us for the newer level, higher level of the ministry we have right now. Well, I'd like us not to wait much uh, more time, but I'd like us to right away go to the Word of God. Can we all stand, ladies and gentlemen? I would like to entitle my sermon this morning as Never Be Distracted. Set a focus to the goal. <laughs> I'd like us now to place our palm to our chest and say, I never must, I never must be, distracted. be distracted. I will set my focus on, set my focus on to the goal. the goal. Amen. I would like us to open our Bibles, brothers and sisters, to Acts chapter 21. Please. We're going to read verses beginning 10 until 19. Acts chapter 21, verses beginning 10 until 19. Okay. Destruction is another word for disturbance. Okay. I will lead us in the reading. Now join me uh, thereafter as uh, you are in your passage. Acts 21, verses 10 through 19. Here we go. After we had been there a number of days, a prophet named Agabus came down from Judea, coming over to us into Paul's bell tied his own hands and feet with it and said, The Holy Spirit says, in his way, the Jews of Jerusalem will bind the owner of this bell and will hand him over to the Gentiles. When we heard this, we and the people there pleaded with Paul not to go up to Jerusalem. Then Paul answered, Why are you weeping and breaking my heart? I am ready not only to be bound, but also to die in Jerusalem for the name of the Lord Jesus. When he would not be dissuaded, we gave up and said, The Lord, the Lord's will will be done. After this, we got ready and went up to Jerusalem. God bless the reading of this word. Let's invite. Uh, I will invite us to bow our heads and we commit ourselves to the Lord God. This morning, I... Uh, Wise family are here. I'm very glad. Thank the Lord. Now, I would like to say a statement. By the way, one thing more. I'd like us to welcome Brother P. Coy and uh, the wife. They are here today for one sad reason. The pastor, as she pastor of uh, ministry in Talusan, was admitted last Monday here for a hypertension. His blood went up to as, to as much as 250, uh, yes, that level, 250, his blood pressure. Now, his body could not contain anymore the pressure of his blood. That there were some veins in his brain that started to erupt. That is why on Wednesday, he only stayed three days uh, in the hospital. He passed away, that is very sad. The remains of our uh, dear pastor, uh, his pastor Edwin Baya, is laying uh, in uh, Villa Funeraria, somewhere here in Anotawanitong uh, Street, Veterans Avenue. An internment will be on Tuesday at 2 in the afternoon. Every night we go and conduct services there. I'm thankful to the Lord for Ian 
or lambs, and of course also see friends. We alternately are sharing the word of God, uh, comforting the family every night. Then I would like to invite you. I'm not sure if you uh, you know the pastor because he didn't have. I, I'm not sure uh, in, in joining a Sunday celebration we have here. But he's such a faithful man. He's such a faithful. In fact, I would like to encourage. After our worship celebration, let us spare some hundreds, you know, a hundred or two hundred, you have five hundred, we can spare, I don't know how much you will, let us, let us extend uh, for the family, okay? Everybody says, praise the Lord. Uh, here we go. Now, we don't have a slide, we're used already for some time, in my presentations, we have a better understanding, you know, uh, a bit better grasp. Every time we have our a worship every Sunday, because of the help of the all uh, of the visual presentation we have. But for now, because of uh, some adjustments, I think we, we need to install uh, an installer yet in the laptop in, in order for us to be able to use this on Sundays. By the way, Ray J is not around; he's sick. Uh, the usual time where we use the laptop. On Sundays is, you know, uh, the laptop of BJ is sick. I would say he's not around. Here we go. Listen. What God places in your heart. Remember, every single, every single one of them is holy. Now He gives you the anointing to accomplish it. Hence, come what are the distractions said before you do not be distracted hence what comes are the destructions set before you do not be disturbed but rather get your focus on and continue until you make it to the finish hello amen i like to say, i would like to read it back what god places in your heart right this very moment is holy. Hello, amen. amen. Those things that you are in passion of, those things where you are excited of every day, they are holy. They come from the Lord. Well, with few exceptions, when they are obvious sinful and obvious immoral, they are wrong. But when they are righteous, when they are not hurting others, and more of all, when they are glorifying to the Almighty, where they are glorifying to our, our Creator, to our Father, have a rest assurance in your heart that they are holy. Everything that you have in your heart, they are holy. It is holy. And you know what? God shall enable you, God will give you every time the anointing that you will be able to accomplish them. Those that God places in your heart. That is why, or hence, what can be the distractions to disturb you around? To pull you here, to pull you there, or maybe to pull you at the back, that you can retract, or can turn around, turn you back around, to the mission or to the work that God set before you. Do not be distracted in all of those. Rather, brothers and sisters, set your eyes on at the front. Continue. Keep up. Do not give up. Why? Because you're not alone in the job. Now, secondly, I would like to mention, you're not alone there because Acts is with you. Amen? Amen. Yeah. And then, primarily, number one, do not be discouraged because you're not there all by yourselves alone. God is with you. Amen? Amen. Let's give the Lord a clap of praise. I'd like to share to you the passage, explain. I believe you have already a good understanding of uh, our reading a while ago, our, our text. It was the Apostle Paul. This is now Acts chapter 21. You know the closing years of Apostle Paul? Because previously, he'd been, you know, without, without stop, going from one city to another city, from Europe to Asia, preaching the gospel every single day. He was able to shake the whole world with the power of the gospel. Now at this time, he was on the closing years of his life. Because at this time, 
in the later verses of chapter 21, he was to be apprehended. Are you there? He was to be imprisoned. Not because he was a criminal or he committed some, some offenses. He was apprehended because many envied him. Many angered him because of Jesus. You know, if you will look at you, you don't look dirty. You didn't do anything bad. You didn't hurt other people. But there are just individuals who just do not like you for without obvious reasons. Now, if you will ask me, ladies and gentlemen, why perhaps, I would say, I presume, maybe because you have Jesus in your heart and people that hated, I mean, these people hated you because they don't want to see that light inside of you. The light is blinding them, amen? Hello, are you there? Yeah. Apostle Paul, chapter 21. Now, the Bible said, before he was able to uh, reach to Jerusalem, it was his destination. Something big would have to change in his life when he would reach to Jerusalem. Prior to reaching to Jerusalem, you know, he disembarked to a one city. Stay there for a week. Join with the rest of the brethren in the synagogue. They worship the Lord. And suddenly, like, like today, Sunday, there was a prophet by the name of Agabus. Hello? He was an old man. A real prophet with the anointing of the Lord just entered into the church. Broke some road. You can imagine an old man with a bird and a renown as a prophet would bring along a road. A real road. And went up to the podium. Podium is pulpit. Apostle Paul there, you know, was showing off already his jubilee, preaching, you know, over time because he not seen the brethren for some time. You just imagine. And all the while, somebody just bowed in, and here was that old prophet, an old man with a robe, went to the podium, said no much word. You know, one of the signs of how you would know a prophet, prophets do not speak a lot. They act more, rather. Hello. The man in the middle of the sermon of Apostle Paul didn't say much word, took his hand and bound him. You just imagine how bizarre was it? His hands and his feet without words. And everybody was on a shock. You just imagine the scenario. Just imagine the atmosphere at that moment, that time. And the believers were in question and they could not stop Agabus because Agabus, they believed that he really was a man of God. He really was a prophet. And at that moment, and at that time, Agabus or rather God through Agabus was about to speak a word. Was about to speak a prophetic word. And there he was. After Agabus, prophet Agabus was done. He spoke the word. So is this man bound in this room. When he reaches to Jerusalem, so he shall be. Hello, amen. amen. Are you understanding? Amen. In other words... To how I am binding you now, he was telling Paul, when you will reach to the city of Jerusalem, you will be bound for real. And you will be persecuted, you will be harmed when you will reach to Jerusalem. You just think about it. If you are a mother to Paul at this time, if you are a sister to Paul at that, at that time, much if you are a wife, if you are a son, a daughter to Paul, what would you do? Perhaps out of sympathy, because you are believing to the prophet, you will dissuade. Say the word dissuade. dissuade. You know what is dissuade? Dissuade is the negative for persuade. You will dissuade it as much as you can to Paul. Please do not go. Don't anymore continue to your journey in Jerusalem. Please. You just imagine if how is it when Paul perhaps is Pastor Burley and we around, you around, are listening to Agabus. I know you love him very much. Maybe he would not anymore untie the rope and even bind me more at the back than in as much I will go. I, I never, uh, I never will uh, anyone continue with my journey to go whatever to Jerusalem 
You know, because you care for me. Are you there? Amen? Amen. But you know what? Apostle Paul, in some ways, he really was a hard-headed man. <laughs> it's just a way that he wouldn't le listen to other suggestions. Now, in this wise, Apostle Paul had some destiny to fulfill. Hello, are you there? Amen. He had some, some reasons, heavenly reasons from God that he would have to go, he would have to fulfill at all costs. That, was, that is why he was telling everyone, you cannot stop me. You cannot disrupt me. You cannot disturb me, for I am heading towards a direction that neither man nor angels nor demons can stop me. God Almighty had me a focus that I cannot allow anything or anyone to stop me in heading towards that direction. Are you, are you still there? Yeah. If I have, I have the slide, I have here an excerpt from that verse where it says, Then Paul answered, Why are you weeping and breaking my heart? I am ready not only to be bound, but also to die in Jerusalem for the name of the Lord Jesus. When he would not be, including Apostle Luke, the writer of the book of Acts, tried themselves to really stop Paul. But the Apostle Paul was too hard in it. I mean, he cannot, he cannot be stopped. He cannot be dissuaded. That is why all of the people succumb to only say, anyways, if it is his will, Paul, let the Lord's will be done. Amen? Amen. I'd like us to close our eyes and raise both of our hands and say, let your will be done on my behalf. Amen. Let's give God a clap of praise. Your life and my life is at the disposals of the Lord, isn't it? We don't own our lives. This life is not ours anymore, it is His. Let me remind you, God bought us. We were slaves, slaves to sin. We were in the public auction. Our souls were in the public auction. We were heading to destruction. We were heading to hell. Because for all have sinned and come short, have fallen short in the glory of God. But Jesus came into the scene. He came into the picture. When the Lord Jesus bought us back, when the Lord redeemed us, not of silver, not of gold, not of corruptible things, but with His own blood, His holy blood. From the auction, from the public auction, the Lord redeemed our souls. Now, we are free. We became free, thank God. For freedom, Christ has set us free. God gave us the liberty. Why? Because we became slaves of Christ. Amen. You become a servant of God. You become a servant of Christ. That's how you receive freedom. Freedom from our vices, you see it. Free, freedom from our sin. Freedom from sicknesses. Freedom from diseases. Freedom from the curse of poverty. Freedom from all kinds of curses that the devils, the devil has in authority against our body because of sin. Thank God for setting us free. Thank God for giving us, you know, uh, the liberty that we are enjoying today. Amen. Amen. Let's give the Lord a clap of praise. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'd like you to close your eyes for a while and raise your hands. Raise your hands up to God and say, Thank you, Lord, for the freedom. Amen. And then tell Him, I love you, Lord. Amen. Now look at me. We'll talk about that which the Lord placed in your heart. Because ladies and gentlemen, those I would, I would call stops, you know, I, I like to use the word or rather, I'd like to use the English vocabularies were more understood in our time than in our generations. Where, at the mention of it, people had a way, uh, rather, people 
will have right away an understanding or a touch of it. Let me use the word stops. Let's talk about those stops the Lord placed in, in your heart. Now, how many of us understand that those stops the Lord placed in our hearts do not necessarily be all the time church things? Or all the time with, you know, a praise the Lord or a hallelujah, uh, what is this? Uh, conjunctions. Oh, the Lord gave inside my heart to be a Bible study leader. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. I mean, those are legitimate. God is giving me the ministry now to be a song leader. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. What else? God is giving him the ministry of visitation. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Those are legitimate. Don't get me wrong. But there are other things that are not really too churchy. That are not really with all the time conjunctions, conjunctions, praise the Lord, hallelujah, but are actually also glorifying God, amen? amen? Don't you know that every time we fulfill something that the Lord gave us as a job, as our mission in this world, we actually are glorifying Him. I'd like to give you an example. Don't you know, every time... Uh, what is this? Honeybees. Honeybee, you know what a honeybee is? Hello, amen? I mm. fly around the flowers and suck, ne suck nectars and are forming their own. Uh, what is this? Uh, own house, own habitation. I don't know. Bye. Oh. And form their own kumd, the honeycomb. You know, those tiny bugs we call honeybees are actually glorifying God. Amen? Amen. How many understand that ordinary as chicken, every time they lay their eggs, they actually are glorifying the Father? That is why when a man acts, walks, and performs, his duty to how God created him as a man, he is glorifying God. Amen. And a woman, every time she performs her job and duties or to how God created her as a woman, she's glorifying God. For example, a woman to give birth. We call that procreation. A woman glorifies God. Now you exchange both gender. A man starts to act, dress up, speaks, and live. As a woman, God is not glorified. Hello? Amen. Or a man changes the way how he acts, he talks, he dresses, and changes his gender and calls herself now, I am a woman. He is actually insulting the Creator whom God created him. Hello, are you there? Amen? Are you understanding what I'm saying? Amen. I have a classmate. Deep inside his heart, he's now a third year, while well, I'm still second year. Way when he was little, he really had some dreams to become somebody. Someone. Now this brother is yet an unbeliever, but I know the Lord is calling him. He's a friend. He's, he's, not, he's not yet, you know, born again. He's not yet church attending, but I believe this brother one day, this friend one day will come and serve the Lord. His name is Sonny Boy. He had some dreams to become rich one day, to become influential one day. One day, he had some dreams inside his heart, you know, to become a blessing to his parents, to his brothers, to his sisters. Except only that this, this friend has only one single uh, flow why he could not reach to be what he wanted in his dreams. He came from a poor family. Hello, amen. How many of us here come from a poor family? He wanted to go to college, but he could not because his parents could not send him. He wanted to have one day to have a better job, but you know, he was only a high school graduate. Then accordingly, at night time, he would go. This was yet, yet how many years past. He would carry a... Uh, 
you know, Ailata, and to sell Balut, you know, in Boulevard. And he had some chances, this same friend, he had some chances, some nights, overnight, where he could not go home but sleep and bend, you know, in Kawa Kawa, in, uh, in the Boulevard. The first time I met him was 1997-1998, where he was a bagger. He was a uh, pindero, a cargador, in then uh, KB's Fodorama. We had some ministry in KB's before. He was lanky and he was skinny and you know he only had a handful of shirts and obviously just a couple of pants. It was our first what is this? Uh, acquaintance. And then came his clothes. I didn't see him then. Little did I know, he had the chance to go and study. And was able to be a working student, finish, you know, in one of the universities here. No, that time UC wasn't yet a university. He finished his studies, his college. And then went to work doing one job to another until he went to the field health. Hello? Amen. Make no story short because he's a hard-working man. Field health found him trustworthy. And then he, little by little, started to be casual and now regular. And boom! I'd like us to say the word boom. boom. He hit his brain. He was given the chance to study in the College of Law. Now he is third year. He has money now. Now the boarding house where they used to live, one time the owner of the boarding house went to him, telling him, Sonny boy, we're running out of we're running out of money. We're selling this boarding house. Would you buy it? Because Sonny Boy has now money. He bought the boarding house, renovated it, and have how many rooms now the man? who could not go to college because he, he was from a uh, a family of poor parents, uh, coming from a family of poor parents, had to sell balut, and all of those is now such a man. Give him two more years, he will be a good lawyer in Zimbabwe. Are you with me? Amen. Those stuffs that I'm talking about that he carries in his heart are the Lord's. Amen. Don't you know? Amen. 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 And you know what? Despite that he is not yet a Christian, he's not yet in the Lord, but I believe he will be called by God. We meet, you know, in the school. You know, we share hands and sometimes I share a lot with this brother. And he kind of liked me also because of our acquaintance then way how many years. And you know what, brothers and sisters, despite that he's an unbeliever, the Lord is enabling him. Now, I'm talking about you as a child of God. How much more to you as a child of God? All the heavens are committed to enable you that in as much you can reach to where God has set you on. There's nothing in this world, there's no one in this world that can ever stop you to where God is heading you to be. Amen. Amen. Let's give the Lord a couple of praise. <laughs> Hallelujah. God is good. All and all the time? Yes. Oh my God. We had a long Saturday yesterday. But it was exciting. Can I share? My car didn't run for more than three weeks. Did you see me bringing our car down? Uh, because I'm not using regularly my car, car anymore. 